Number five, the spiritual stream. Coming up first on our list today is this footage that has been setting people's minds ablaze. Maybe it's one of the most compelling pieces of supernatural footage on the internet recently, and it's only number five. So you gotta imagine this is gonna be a good list, and I'm not being sensationalist in any way. Take a look at this. A group of friends and streamers had been watching a sports stream together, and after the stream had wrapped, you know, they're getting into the post commentary section of things, discussing their thoughts, theories, when things took a turn for the supernatural. Streamer Chris D noticed a dark shadow passing from the right side to the left side of his webcam before going out of frame. Not even half a second later, Chris turned around deeply aware that there was something that had passed behind him. Chris was terrified, asking if he'd just seen a ghost. Chris's up close encounter made his friends into a believer. I mean, yeah, if I think there was a video of one of my friends having a ghost walk right behind him, I'd probably start believing too. The host of the podcast running the stream, Jay Robb, claimed that he was always skeptical of the idea that the supernatural was real, but quoting, after what I witnessed while streaming on my channel, it forever changed my belief. And this incident might actually have changed the friends far more than just believing and might have given them a bit of spiritual guidance, if you'll pardon the pun, as they've changed their path from sports podcasting to supernatural huntings, as the boys are rebranding as the Ghost Brothers and are going to stream Chris's house directly to see if they can catch anything else on camera. We'll definitely see and we'll be keeping an eye on them and hopefully we'll see them again in another top five scary video. Top five even scarier poltergeist sightings. But if you can't wait for those guys to start getting some ghost content, we've already got some ghost videos right here. You don't gotta go anywhere. Click on through on top five scary and find something to like. Hit subscribe. Make sure you hit that little bell as well so you don't miss a scream. But you gotta do that at the end of this video for me, would you kindly? Because I got four more pieces of poltergeist footage coming up for you right about now. Number four, no strings attached. I think most of us could probably agree that regardless of if a spirit or poltergeist is possessing a puppet or not, a puppet is terrifying. I just don't think any good can ever come from teaching a piece of wood to talk. Whether it's the uncanny valley that makes them so disturbing, a biological impulse to make us recognize that that's not a real person, or maybe just a general reasonable disdain for the practice of ventriloquism, puppets are scary, you know? The goose Bumps dummy, movie star Annabelle, that freaky little puppet freak from Saw who loves playing all those funny little games. Well, the truth is always scarier than fiction, I find, and in this next clip, we've got a true haunted puppet on our case and sealed away in a case. Take a look at this footage that has people's jaws hanging open. Did you see it? It's kind of hard to miss. It looks like this dummy is keen to give a performance without any help from anybody and has learned to move its mouth on its own. Is something possessing it? Is there a malevolent spirit inside? this puppet or is it just going solo? Knowing its history makes things a lot more interesting. This doll is named Mr. Fritz and it was recovered from a World War II prison camp and eventually would make its way into the hands of a private collector in the UK. The new owner, one Michael Diamond, claims that several times he noticed the glass display would open on its own during the night. Now, if I got a haunted doll from a World War II prison camp and the glass case that I was putting it in kept accidentally opening on its own, I would probably burn my house down, change countries, but he filmed it for a few nights and caught footage of the seemingly possessed dummy talking. His solution was to wrap it in chains and keep a blanket over it. Again, I would probably bury it, cast it into the ocean, I don't know, pour salt on it, burn it, but hey, you do you and I'm glad you're doing it because we got footage of it. Mr. Diamond says he's not worried, saying, my wife and daughter both hate it and I understand why I'm not intimidated by it. Now this obviously could be fake, some special effects, some fishing wire, I'm sure, but I I'm inclined to believe this one is real, and maybe that's just because I don't want to mess with this puppet at all. Number three, TikTok's poltergeist pair. Coming up next on our list of poltergeist sightings caught on camera is this TikTok account, Lainey and Ben. You might have even come across them if you're particularly big on supernatural stuff on TikTok. They're a pair of teachers who've been viral for the haunted house they live in. Take a look at some of the footage captured from their account. Now, Lainey said she hadn't believed in spirits, but had hoped that she had because after her mother's passing. She started to truly believe when she said her mother came to her in a dream and told her, I'm 
here to tell you I'm okay and I'm happy. She would meet her partner Ben at Teachers College and the two of them married quickly, buying a house in the summer of 2018. Not relatable at all. They moved into their house and shortly after moving in, found odd noises keeping them up at night. Footsteps on stairs, creaky voices, until it started to ramp up, with them claiming that they were hearing voices calling out to them during the night, whispering their names. They claimed after this first incident with the voices, the hauntings would then become much more intense. Objects shifting, being tossed across the room, coming into a room and seeing a chair stacked, cabinets flying open, drawers launched around. They say they had a friend house-sitting for them while they were away, and within a few hours, the friend had called to return the keys and said he was done. Allegedly, while sleeping, he felt the duvet get torn off of him and thrown across the room, and that it was just too much to deal with. Honestly, fair. I am the exact same way when I wake up, and that is regardless of if a ghost is touching me or not. Now, despite the fact that the two seem to be living in the Amityville Horror House, the couple enjoy it and say they love their spirits and love being part of the paranormal community. Now, is that because these are benevolent, friendly spirits that are easy to get along with and have exposed the pair to a world they didn't know, or do the pair just enjoy the fame and success that comes from posting the clips to TikTok? But I mean, come on, could it be faked? Do you really think anyone would go on the internet and fake things about the supernatural for clicks and ad money? Do you think anyone would do that? Number two, the Deer Park Demon. Coming up next is going to be this Irish school that has a little too much school spirit. Huh? Instead of a student body, they got a disembody? Do I have a third pun? No. On October 1st at around 3 a.m., the witching hour, surveillance cameras captured these spooky happenings at Deer Park Public in Cork, Ireland, weeks before Halloween. We see the lockers shake, the doors slam, and a sign flopping over, all without a string or person in sight. Now, some online had questioned whether or not the footage could have been doctored or edited in any way, or perhaps it was a hoax with a green screen, and that's certainly possible possible, but I think you should look up how much funding any public school receives because they really don't have a lot of room in the budget for fake ghost videos. This footage was unsettling the staff, with the principal baffled at what had happened, wondering if the footage was somehow evidence of a very complicated senior prank. A prank perhaps, but one done by poltergeists, not students. Allegedly, this wasn't the first time something supernatural has been reported on in Deer Park either. The principal, one Aaron Wolf, said that staff in the past have complained about inexplicable happenings around the school, from minor things like the hallways being supernaturally cold to more extreme things like hearing the ghostly wail of a banshee through the halls late at night. Of course, that could just as easily be a student getting back their test results and discovering they are not making honor roll this year. The school was built on a site known as the Green Gallows, a 19th century execution ground for criminals. Is it possible that the lingering spirit of some of these former criminals are wandering the halls? Just look for a bit of post-mortuary education? I'm not sure, and I'm not looking to find out anytime soon. I graduated twice, not looking to go back to school a third time. Number one, the Hillview Haunting. And finally, rounding out our list today of supernatural occurrences on camera is going to be this clip I've dubbed the Hillview Haunting, what with it occurring at the Hillview Manor in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. It's been a nursing home, but above all else and beyond, it's a haunted house. The spot is fairly well-known locally for being a haunted destination for supernatural enthusiasts, even offering tickets for overnight stays for amateur ghost hunters to try and find the truth. And that's exactly what had happened to an anonymous Redditor who posted this shocking footage of her and her husband and the rest of the tour being charged at by some unknown force. And this footage is relentless, let me tell you. Now, the Redditor blessed us with a little backstory, saying she had bought the tickets for the tour with her husband for his birthday as a gift, and immediately so the two of them began to feel uncomfortable as they disembarked on the tour. Long, empty hallways in the dark, droning sounds, and ghost stories told from the tour guide all contributed to a sense of dread. Her husband had told her that the entire time they'd been walking through the manor, he had felt something grabbing onto his arm, as if it was like a spider web that had been rubbing against him. And whenever he'd adjust, he'd find nothing there. Now, eventually, the tour made its way to a hallway on the third floor, and when they started to hear footsteps by the nurse's station that grew louder, heavier, 
They found the walls and floors shaking and something sent her husband flying. The two of them ran to the office shaking with pure fear. They looked over the surveillance footage to try and determine what had happened, but all they were left with was more questions and what was seemingly an invisible presence knocking them all over. So what do you think? It seems pretty difficult to fake whatever had transpired here. I don't know how much you know about Pratt Falls, but they're not terribly easy to land, not terribly easy to make yourself fall on command. Do you think that was really a poltergeist caught on camera? Let me know down below, because I think this is one of the spookier pieces of paranormal footage I've seen in at least 30 seconds. Number five, James May Pompey. James May Pompey. James May Pompey. I'm going to be saying that for the rest of the day. James May is a renowned British television host, notable for decades of service to the BBC, zipping cars around exotic places. After Top Gear quietly came to a mutual end that all parties agreed on in 2015, May continued globe trotting with less companions and less motoring in a new show called James May, Our Man In. Well, when Our Man went to Rome to see Pompeii, it seems he accidentally caught a specter on tape in the old city of Pompeii. You watch this clip and tell me what you think because I think this one is all kinds of freaky and might be one of the better ghost clips I've seen in a minute. That's why we're starting with it. As May is talking, a lone figure can be seen crossing the otherwise empty street for seemingly evaporating before your very own eyes. It's, uh, it's eerie. I ain't gonna lie. An unsettling coincidence is that the ghost seemingly appears as May is talking to the audience, reminding us that even though Pompeii has found life as a tourist destination, it's still one of history's biggest mass graves. Now, I like to play skeptic a little bit. Like, you know, I'm more scully than I am Mulder. This ghost footage is pretty striking, but we can't cross out the possibility that this could just be something as boring as a camera glitching out or someone trying to scrub out a pedestrian in the background of an otherwise clean shot. Although if that's the case, why so much of the figure left behind? Could this be a former citizen of Pompeii still trapped through the daily loop of her everyday life after the volcano claimed it and changed their lives forever? Or could this ghost be the ghost of Jeremy Clarkson's career hanging around James May? Ops, that, that one's too mean. Too far, too far. Anyway, we may never know. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of this one. And if you're looking for way more ghost videos, you already know I'm about to tell you top five scary is where to be. And if ghosts aren't your jam, we have got just about everything freaky under the sun and above the sun you could possibly imagine. Cryptids, conspiracies, aliens, true crime, fake crime, baby, we got it. If it's spooky, we've done a video or three on it. So hit subscribe, hit the bell, and don't miss a single second. But do it after the end of this video, okay? We got way more ghosts coming up for you. Number four, the insane asylum ghost. This next clip is one that is gonna have the hairs on the back of your neck standing on end. This was originally posted to the ghosts subreddit. A user by the lovely name of Random Doge 47 posted that she'd recently visited the Hartwood Insane Asylum, just as a, a, a visitor. Don't wanna make that clear, not a patient. It's an abandoned mental facility in the UK that's long been thought to be the home of malicious spirits and poltergeists of former patients who never managed to find peace and drift off towards the afterlife. Definitely given bad vibes looking at pictures of this. Pictures of abandoned hospitals give me the creeps. Something bad. You can just tell nothing good has ever happened here and nothing good will continue to happen here. Take a look at this footage. In the clip, we see someone or something in the top window seemingly noticing that they're being recorded and then hurriedly shutting the window to sneak off into the night. Now that's pretty darn creepy, but you could be thinking, well, what if it's just the Redditor's friend or something and they, they schemed this hoax by preparing somebody. They had somebody climb up in there. Well, the place is locked up and the interiors are dilapidated in a state of serious disarray and it's all collapsed in on itself and couldn't really support anyone up on the top floors. The windows are locked and the Redditor said there was no easy way for someone to get in. So what is happening here? Is this the ghost of a former patient? Someone who managed to sneak inside and is squatting inside an abandoned insane asylum? Three raccoons in a trench coat pretending to be human and hiding out in an abandoned asylum where they live and go on little adventures? It could be, and that's what scares me. But you let me know what you think this could be, okay? Number three, security footage. Now we got ourselves another clip from the ghost subreddit. What can I say? If you want to look 
look at ghosts, it's a pretty good place to go. They're, they're all right there. This one was posted to us from user Ryman8 with the caption, something set off the security footage on one of our properties. Nothing was stolen, this is the footage. Now you take your, a look for yourself at the spine tingling footage. This is one of those ones I had to watch twice, so don't feel bad if you gotta scoop back 30 seconds to watch it again. Let's roll it. At first, it might just seem like a frame at a skin ring. I had to really press my nose up to the monitor to see what was going on here. But you can see the faintest silhouette of a figure creeping through in the background, seemingly walking through thin air, barely able to make it out. And then when you see it, you're probably never gonna sleep again as you see that ethereal little shape moving through the room. Now, the poster claims that the front door to the property was open, and that is what triggered the alarm and triggered the security footage. Who could have done that if not for this malevolent spirit? One commenter suggested that it was possible that the energy dispelled by the ghost could have been what set off the alarm and opened the door, and, and that's why it looks so spectral and ethereal on the footage. What do you all think out there, my internet comment hive mind? Is this some real proof of something from another world walking into ours? Or is this just some dust and light hitting the camera at just the right angle and our eyes filling in the details we wish we were seeing? Please do let us know down below. Doing some digging on this one, the Redditor returned to the same thread a year later and reported that nothing else like this had ever happened, and that he'd researched evidence of any spirits in the local area or on this property and couldn't find anything. So this could just be a one-off incident, or it could be something much more sinister. It could be. I can say whatever I want when I'm talking into a camera. I can say that all of these are aliens if I wanted to. <laughs> I'm in control here. Number two, the ghost palette. Coming up next on this list, we have got some more weird security footage to tickle your viewing pleasure. There's no ethereal figures walking around in this one, but it is pretty spooky nonetheless. This footage was posted by someone who used to work in a meat packing plant, but presumably left when they saw this security camera footage and found out the joint was haunted. In the video, we can see a pallet jack on the CCTV freaking out seemingly being pulled or moving itself around the warehouse. I've got to say, haunting aside, the atmosphere of this particular meatpacking plant already seems scary. You know, it's flickering lights, cold looking floors. I'm pretty sure this is the meat plant where Jigsaw was playing his funny little games. Back to the topic at hand. What is going on with that pallet jack? There's no reason for it to be moving. There's no wind or anything to push it. And it looks like someone is manually moving it around, if not a little awkwardly. Could it be a ghost who got itself hired? Or is it the ghost of an employee? employee of the meat plant who's still stuck working here. I gotta wonder if ghosts have rights or like a, a ghostly union, because it does seem like the ghost is the only one on shift right now, and that can't be safe. Where's his ghostly supervisor? Is he making sure he's taking his 30? Now, some commenters with more experience in warehouse settings have suggested that the pallet jack malfunctioning like that could be faulty wiring, a, a loose axle or something that could be causing it. There could be all manner of reasonable explanations, or it could be something supernatural sneaking into our world. So what what do you think, my comment gang? Is this just a pallet jack on the fritz, or is this a ghost caught on camera? And finally, number one, mystery orbs. Our last clip today comes to us from the subreddit High Strangeness, which I cannot recommend enough if you like paranormal and bizarre, inexplicable content on the internet, and I kind of suspect you do, because you're watching this video, aren't you? But don't spend too much time there. Remember to come on back to Top 5 Scary. Posted to us by user Swingset Superman, this ring light footage has been puzzling viewers as they try to figure out what's going on and what was caught on camera. You take a look for yourself and you see if you got any luck putting this together. There appears to be a series of super bright lights floating outside around the front door. Now that might not be that odd, but it's the way they move I can't stop focusing on. They just don't seem like they're from this world, you know? They float around as if all the dots are connected in some way, moving in coordination. At first I thought they might be bugs, fireflies, or something, but I ain't never seen no bug move together like that. If anything, I think we can qualify these strange dots as a UAP, an unidentified aerial presence. That's what I see at first. It seems like a fleet of little minuscule UFOs, although maybe I have just made one too many UFO videos recently, and I think anything strange in the sky, regardless of height, are UFOs. Now, one commenter suggested these could be fairies or pixies of some sort, which would be interesting. I don't think we really talk much about fairies or sprites on the channel much at 
at all. We always talk about scary supernatural things. Makes sense, we're top five scary, but I would love to talk about a fairy sometime. So I send it off to you, internet commenters. Take a look at the clip, look up the original source if you'd like, and you let me know what you think was captured by the camera that day. Maybe it was just a ghost dropping off a ghostly Uber Eats order. Number five, Barton Mansion, California. Coming up first today on our list of ghost videos that'll change your tune is an old classic, and to date, one of the best pieces of paranormal footage I've ever seen. I remember watching this one a while ago. It is a bit of an older clip, but it is an absolute classic. Maybe you could use a refresher. Maybe you've never seen it. Two paranormal investigators were filming themselves investigating the Barton Mansion, a famous haunted house just outside of Los Angeles. In 1859, Dr. Benjamin Barton and his family purchased 640 acres of San Bernardino land for a reasonable sum of $500. That's that's probably the scariest part of this story. I literally do pay $1,200 for a basement. Bartman came to turn the property into a successful vineyard and winery, retiring from the practice of medicine entirely. Benjamin would then begin construction on a mansion, building it with clay that came directly from a nearby gravesite. Bad bad move. Almost immediately after the construction of the house, Barton's wife collapsed and succumbed to illness. Barton would become a recluse and shut himself inside the manor, with rumors spiraling outwards of Barton becoming engrossed with magic and satanic practices to try and revive his wife. Rumors would be told of loud noises and red lights piercing through the windows of the mansion. These days, nearby residents have reported seeing hooded figures entering and leaving, as well as finding discarded animal bodies near the property, insinuating that absolutely nothing good is happening in there. The Barton Mansion would become far more famous when a pair of paranormal investigators went into the long abandoned mansion to try and un uncover some of the legends. In this clip, as they're exploring on the staircase, they turn and see the apparition of a tall, terrifyingly pale demonic creature. A ghost? Barton's late wife? Barton himself? Not looking to find out, the investigators double time it out of there. The genuine fear from the investigators' voices makes it seem really real. Like I said, to date, one of the best paranormal videos on the internet. But it's only number five, so you could imagine I got four great ones coming up for you. But before we dive right on into that, I'd like to ask if you enjoy the channel, you like what we do here, why not toss us a subscribe, hit that little bell so you don't miss a single scream. We've got scary videos on just about anything you can think of. If you can think it up, odds are good we've done two to three on it. We got videos on everything freaky under the sun and above it, but do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more stories coming up for you right now. Number four, Ghost Girl. Coming up next, another true vintage. I'm like a sommelier for ghost videos. This video uploaded to YouTube titled Ghost Girl. Straight, plain and simple. In it, we get a first person view of a paranormal investigator wandering through a house. The atmosphere is thick, and there's a sense of dread in the air. Even without being there yourself, just seeing the video is enough to make your hair stand up. As the camera creeps upward, the investigator slowly moves forward down the hallway, peering through a crack in the door at what looks to be the shape of a young girl sitting in the hallway. That's my least favorite thing for a ghost to be. I don't know why, that's just the scariest one. The ring, yeah, I don't know. The shadows seem humanoid, and Maybe it's just your brain filling in the details, but it definitely looks like there's a person in front of whoever's filming. If you listen carefully, it sounds too like you can make out the sounds of weeping or crying, a sad ghost. The video pushes forward for its horrifying conclusion when you see the door open again and you're treated to an up close and personal view of what is unmistakably a small ghost standing up. Definitely Sadako vibes. Now it's a fairly old video, so I was hoping I could dig up a bit of context around it and see if I could get some backstory and get to the bottom of this clip. But clicking through on the channel that it uploaded, all we could really find was a few videos of a, a pretty cute little cat and little else in the way of paranormal content or, or really ever any explanation at all. So was this a real ghost caught on camera and it's never been topped or was this just a hoax to drum up some attention back on the early days of YouTube when things were nice and good? On a side note, does anyone else out there really miss that sort of sweet spot of when YouTube first started out and ghost videos were mostly like this? Some blurry footage of someone walking around a house that you and your dad would talk about whether it was real or a hoax or not for weeks. Maybe I'm just waxing nostalgic entirely lately, but I miss the really blurry low res era of ghost videos. Number three, the fallen angel. Up next on our collection of captivatingly horrifying clips that'll make true believers out of the most determined skeptics is this clip uploaded to YouTube called Fallen Angel of Catalonia. Certainly a bold name and also a pretty good name for like a deathcore band if you're looking for one. Near the village of Camp de Vellon, that's not at all how you say that, Near the village of Camp de Vanel, I think, a group of paranormal investigators are pursuing a lead. 
Hearing that there was sightings of something bizarre in the nearby area, they go bringing a camera hoping to document the truth of what they find, not knowing the danger they would soon find themselves in. During the video, you can make out what looks to be discarded white feathers floating around in the breeze around where they saw the creature, leading to the belief that it was a fallen angel. Now, in the video, the investigators are speaking Spanish, but luckily, Spanish, what with being a language that a lot of people speak, we can translate pretty easily. They're talking sarcastically about how this is such an incredible experience and asking if you see the feathers that are floating all around. The pair of investigators, though, they then come across something lurched over, lurking in the dark, a pale, sickly looking skeletal creature. Seems like the skin is hanging off of rotten bones with piercingly white, ethereal glowing eyes screeching. Oh, the it's the kind of monster that would not look out of place in the hollowed halls of the SCP Foundation. Screeching, it sends the investigators fleeing away. Now, was this a real clip or was this filmed intentionally? I don't want to burst your bubble too, 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 too much, but if you do a bit of digging on this, uh, you can pretty easily find a making of the Fallen Angels of Catalonia video, and I will say that not a lot of true paranormal experiences have a documentary explaining how they filmed their process. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that one was for fun. Did you have fun? I had fun. Number two, Bionicles. I feel like if you're a certain age, I can say the word Bionicle, and it'll inspire a sense of ferocious passion in your heart. We all love Bionicle, and for good reason. It was probably the coolest toy line maybe ever. I was obsessed with them as a young scrapper, as my parents can probably attest by the 3,000 little pieces that are living in their house somewhere. Biomechanical robots with lore based on Maori culture. Oh, the boys at Lego were cooking with that. I'm not gonna act like I didn't cry when Takua put on the Mask of Light. I'm a big enough man to admit that. All right, all of this aside, all this waxing poetic about Bionicle, all of those guys are apart somewhere, which might be a good thing, because if this video is any indication, spirits seem to be able to latch onto a Bionicle. Check out this wild footage of a haunted Bionicle moving its head. Look real close, it's pretty subtle. I had to watch it a few times to because I wasn't getting it at first, but when you do, oh, it's gonna make you recoil. I got a little bit of context provided by the original uploader too. First of all, I've never believed in ghosts and I don't consider my home creepy. I know the land doesn't have dark history or anything, but ever since we moved in, we've experienced some strange things. The weirdest thing is one that involves our old toys. One recurring thing we've heard tons of times is the sound of someone digging through Lego pieces upstairs. It's a very distinct noise. We started recording to try and get this noise, and that's when we all noticed that a large Bionicle in the back of the closet turns its head towards us right as we're leaving. So what do you all think, my friends beyond the screen? Is this proof of a poltergeist with a bit of a nostalgic kick looking to save Mata Nui from darkness? Is the Bionicle itself coming to life. I think we need more poltergeists out there who just want to like kick back and play with Lego instead of haunting you. I'm willing to bet more poltergeists are like that than you think. Just want to vibe out, have a little fun. And number one, the basement. Coming up at our final spot today is this video uploaded to YouTube a few years back, which has been making the rounds around the paranormal sides of the internet recently, titled Real Life Paranormal Activity Caught on Camera. I love when the title promises something bold. We get treated to a picturesque first person walking view of a beautiful mid-century modern home, let me just say, being walked around by someone maintaining the property. In the video description, he mentions that he thinks he's caught a squatter living in the home he's working on. And in a way, it seems like he's correct, just not the kind of squatter he was expecting, it's not a corporeal one. As he walks around the house, there's a sense of dread and you know nothing good is coming. But then he opens the basement door, starts calling out who's there, like he's in Luigi's Mansion. No one answers him directly, but as he calls out in fear, we see the lights from down below in the basement Wait. start to flicker. And this is a round where I would have noped out of there completely. Something, some force of nature from this world or another collides with the man recording the video, causing him to drop his phone and realistically dash on out of there, fleeing the scene, leaving behind the camera, staring up at the ceiling as we're left wondering. I would super recommend watching this whole one. It's actually genuinely one of the scarier, scarier videos I've seen. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a scary YouTube host. 
it was actually downright freaky. When the recorder leaves and the camera's just left running, I actually felt like genuinely kind of lonely and scared. Like I was worried something was gonna happen if he didn't come back. I don't get that from most horror movies these days, let alone random ghost videos. So this one gets the Crypt Keeper's recommendation officially, and I watch thousands of ghost videos. So I like to think I'm a bit of a sommelier by now. I already said that in the video. All right. Number five, La Llorona. Have you ever heard the legend of La Llorona? If you're a top five scary fan, most likely, because I know for a fact I've mentioned it once or twice in a video before, it's a very commonly repeated old folktale, and it's shown up in countless movies and TV. It was just made into a movie that was connected to the Conjuring series. But if you missed out on all of that, the short version of the legend of La Llorona is a Spanish ghost who is said to have cast her own offspring into a river and drowned them in a manic fit. We've all had bad days? When she realized what she had done, she cast herself into the water as well, but was cursed to spend eternity searching for her young wherever a body of water is found, calling out into the night, known for a wail and a cry. It's why she's called La Llorona, the weeping woman. She appears all in white with long black hair and is recognized for her cry and appearance. Take a little, take a little sip. You entertain yourself back there for a minute. Now think about all of that while we watch this next clip posted to Reddit titled, My Mom is in Mexico right now. And tell me if this doesn't make you think of La Llorona just a little bit or like a lot bit. While walking late at night, a traveler comes across a strange white figure that seems clad in a long robe or a dress, moving in a way that makes them seem like they're not of this world. This white dress shining through the otherwise dark night. So what do you think, my faithful YouTube commenter audience? Is this proof of a ghost caught on camera, proof of an old legend walking among us, or is someone just putting the effort into a really complicated hoax? And if you're looking for more videos that might be hoaxes or might not be, Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some. We've got just about everything freaky you could possibly do a top 5 list on. Conspiracies, aliens, cryptids, true crime, fake crime, ghosts, and another thing, another scary thing. We've got it. So hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell, but please, would you kindly do that at the end of this video because I got some more scary ghosts coming right up for you. Number 4. Number 4. Oxford Castle. Stuart James is an amateur paranormal investigator and a spiritual enthusiast who's posted a few of his findings of strange happenings to the internet. Now, a lot of the things he posted could find their way onto this list, but it was this video of him exploring Oxford Castle and prison that had my hands turning cold and clammy. Or so than usual, I mean. Once standing as a medieval castle, the castle was mostly destroyed in the English Civil War. By the 18th century, was rebuilt to serve as Oxford's local prison. Now, a new prison was built on the site from 1785 and remained in operation all the way until 1996. With a few hundred years of visitors passing through its cold stone walls and spending their last days behind bars, is it much of a surprise that it's said to be haunted by the ghosts of some of the long-term residents who just can't seem to break free of prison life? As such, it's a popular spot for fledgling ghost hunters to go looking. The prison actually even offers ghost hunting packages and overnight adventures if you're looking for that sort of thing, but why don't you watch the clip first before you make any decisions? Did you see it? While looking through the glass window pane through a door, a face can be seen clear as day. James said as soon as he saw the face in the window, he and the rest of his team ran to the hills out of the prison, fearing what they had encountered and preferring to look the footage over later in the safety than spend another minute there. What do you think? Because I think I would do pretty much the exact same thing. I mean, I'm watching this video from the comfort of my office in a cozy little little recording studio, and it was still enough to put my hair on end. I can't imagine that happening to you in front of your face and being able to cape a straight face, let alone dry jeans, and you're cool. I'd probably be on the first train out of Oxford and spend the rest of my day salt circling just in case. Number three, the trampoline. Have you ever seen The Ring? Probably not, because if you saw the movie The Ring, you would have died roughly seven days after that, and you wouldn't be able to watch all these lovely videos. I'm just kidding, of course, it's not haunted. Or is it? Now the original Japanese ring is one of my favorite horror movies and I can't think of many things I've seen in my life half as truly creepy as Sadako stretching herself out of the TV into the real world. That scary long black hair covering her face just the way she moves, ah yeah, every time. Well, if I thought that was bad, this next thing might actually do me in and put me in the grave. Take a look at this next clip. At first, it seems like someone just filming some summer fun until you get a better look at what a appears to be a figure clad all in white crawling out from under the trampoline. Looking 
Honestly, a lot like Sadako crawling out of that TV. You see why I brought the ring up? It definitely has me stretching my, scratching my head watching over again. However, not everyone is as convinced as I am. I am pretty easily convinced. One commenter on the video attempted to debunk it as a fake, lending a bit of insight as a video editor. They said, uh, I guess that the ghost figure is a clip of someone standing up, which has been motion tracked and composited in with blurring and opacity. If the shot was stabilized, like I'm guessing it was, this would be fairly straightforward and easy. The camera shake could be added in digitally after the motion tracking is done to really sell the shot. I noticed a blur on what looks like the ghost's back as it stands up, and the jumper leg passes over the figure. This blur is wiped away. This clip stops as the figure is moving above the black netting, which is being used to conceal any editing artifacts. Well, that's all well and reasonable, but it could also just be a ghost. That sounds like too much effort to me, personally. I'm, I mean, really, also, you gotta think of this. Who would go on the internet and just tell lies? What kind of person would go on the internet and then tell people that these supernatural things were happening if these things weren't really happening? What kind of person would do that just for clicks? Huh? Number two, creepy puppet. I think we can all agree that haunted or not, a puppet is terrifying. Nothing good has ever come from teaching a piece of wood to flap its lips. Just look at Jeff Dunham. Whether it's the uncanny valley that makes them so disturbing or simply a reasonable disdain for ventriloquism, puppets are scary. Think of that little freak from Saw, the Goosebumps dummy, or Annabelle. Well, the truth is always scarier than fiction, I find. And in this next clip, we've got ourselves a true haunted puppet. Take a look at this footage that has people's jaws hanging open. Watch the clip. Do you see it? It's kind of hard to miss. Looks like this dummy is keen to give a performance without any help from anybody and has learned to move its mouth on its own. Is something possessing it? Now knowing its history actually makes things a little bit more interesting because it seems like it could be likely. The doll is nicknamed Mr. Fritz and it was recovered from a World War II prison camp where it is said to have been made by a prisoner. It eventually made its way into the hands of a private collector in the United Kingdom. This new owner, one Michael Diamond, claims that several times he noticed the glass display case on Mr. Fritz would open on itself during the night. Now, the reasonable thing to do would be to, you know, burn his house down and make sure the doll burns up and release that evil away and, I don't know, move countries. He instead set up a camera and filmed it for a few nights and caught this horrifying footage of the seemingly possessed dummy talking. His solution was to wrap it in chains and keep a blanket over it. I would like send it to space or cast it into the ocean, but you do you. He's actually not too worried about it at all. Mr. Diamond says, my wife and daughter both hate it and I understand why, but I'm not intimidated by a braver man than me. Now this could be faked, I'm sure, but I'm inclined to believe this is real. Haunted or not, I just do not trust this puppet even a little bit, you know? Number one, grandparents ghost. That sounds sad. I like to save the best for last, and I think after you watch this clip, you might agree with me, as this is one of the weirder things on a list of all weird things. This was posted to the ghost subreddit earlier in the month and was making the rounds on the paranormal and scarier sides of the internet as even the biggest skeptics were wondering just what it was they were looking at. This redditor and their family had taken a day for a family vacation at a nearby water park, and when they had returned, there were several calls from the security company telling them that an alarm inside their grand parents' home had been tripped. When they returned home to watch the footage, they were stunned at what they had seen, and I invite you now to watch it too. As you could probably see, there's clearly something going on in that house that's a little more powerful than just the wind or a trick of the light, and hey, don't start telling me this is just an orb of dust floating by the camera lens, okay? There is something seriously wrong going on in here, and I think they need to dial an exorcist. The doors of the living room mysteriously shut by themselves, at the same time that the lamp on the table is flickering out like crazy. You keep watching the video, you also see a bowl moving by itself and a chair being dragged across the floor. All things that are like a checklist if you're going through to check if your house is being haunted. That's typical poltergeist behavior. Now, some people were a bit skeptical, suggesting this could very likely have been doctored or faked just to get some attention, but he did post a follow-up afterwards to provide just a little bit more context. He said that he did some digging into the history surrounding his house and the neighborhood. Found out that he lived in the town Napoleon grew up in. That's pretty cool. But more interestingly, he found that the house that 
that his grandparents lived in used to be two houses that were converted into one. And in the other one, there was a story of a man taking his life. So could this be a sign of his spirit passing through something walking through the worlds? Or is this all just a complicated scheme for some upvotes and clicks? You let me know down below in the comments, my friends. How about we start off today with a famous ghost ship? Specifically speaking, the Queen Mary, located in Long Beach, California. Aside from a brief stint as a warship back in World War II, this place has served as a luxury ocean liner from 1936 to 1967, and during that time it was the site of at least one death, but a lot of folks believe that more went unreported. There have been numerous sightings by tourists who have seen various apparitions and events that generally could not have taken place in a ship that has been defunct for over 40 years. There have been reports of over 150 ghosts on the Queen Mary ship, and going by the regularity and the sightings of these paranormal beings, there seems to be a lot of truth in them. People seem to have experienced drastic temperature changes when they entered certain parts of the ship, such as near the second class pool, the haunted stateroom, the shaft alley, and the adjacent bathroom. The stateroom is said to smell of cigars and perfume. Another weird phenomenon is the creaking of doors, knocks, sudden squeals, laughter, sounds of people talking, whistling in an empty room, you know, all the usual ghosty things. As in every ghosty story, while there have been sightings and hearings of lights being switched off and on, and laughter coming from a room, in the case of the Queen Mary ship, there have been other incidents as well which have been noted as being out of the ordinary. A sighting of a crewman in blue overalls whose face is bearded is a regular apparition. Now this ghost's appearance refers to the well-known incident in the Queen Mary ship where a fireman was killed by getting crushed underneath a watertight door during a regular fire drill. This apparition is of the same crew member who was killed and now haunts the doorway which was responsible for his death in the first place. The appearance of wet footprints on the floor near the first class swimming pool when no swimming activity can be possible in the first place is also a spooky happening that you I've mentioned quite often. Apart from these two events, young voices crying and laughing in the third class playroom nursery, and the sighting of a young girl who sadly died in the second class swimming pool have also been reported. When visiting an area that was once used as a dressing room for entertainment shows, one guest immediately felt like they were going to faint and that their battery, like their you know, energy levels had drained. Later in that tour, the guide mentioned that that was kind of common for that room. Excuse me. The city of Long Beach purchased the ship in 1967 and turned it into a hotel, and it still serves that purpose today, although the reported ghosts of the deceased passengers get to stay for free. By the way, for an extra dose of spine-tingling experiences, see if you can visit the ship's engine room, which is considered to be a hotbed. Swell. Alrighty folks, next up we have a Canadian ghosty location, good old Julie's Harbor. In Newfoundland and Labrador, among the welcoming people and hospitality the region is known for, you can also find stories of the paranormal. One such tale centers on this harbor, a resettled community near Triton. According to skipper Mike Roberts of Badger Bay Boat Tours, the community is home to something not of this world. And as Newfoundland and Labrador tourism eerily puts it, the only way to get there is by boat, snowmobile, or ATV, which means it's also the only way to leave if you encounter something spooky. Standing in that resettled community, you can listen to the nothingness. The silence is profound. Julie's Harbor used to be known as St. Augustine's back in the 1800s, and this is when the earliest haunted tales begin. According to the Tourism Center, Julie's Harbor is named after a woman who drowned in what is now known as Julie's Harbor Pond. Well, how she died, other than er, drowning isn't known, it's said that her spirit has been felt in the area ever since her death. Now, after her death, the town was renamed, and her spirit's been just hanging out which is why I'm very careful about knowing where I want to pass. When you arrive in Julie's Harbor under a bright blue sky, at first glance, it looks like your ideal getaway. It's in a secluded part of Badger Bay, and it has a beach with a lot of space to pitch a tent. But as you hike into the woods, out of nowhere, you see a headstone, then another, then another. These are the headstones of entire families. And uh, suddenly the quiet that was once pristine and welcoming kind of turns eerie and bone chilling. This graveyard is the only thing that's left of the original settlement dating back to the 1800s. Visitors to the harbor have recounted bone chilling tales of hearing sounds of laughter, despite being alone, and hearing young voices calling from the woods. During one visit, a man was in his cabin alone when he heard the sounds of young people laughing, and the laughter grew so loud and lasted so long it drove him from his cabin. And he's not the only one to hear the laughter. A group of kayakers reportedly set up camp in Julie's Harbor years ago, only to bail out halfway through the night because 
they heard young voices calling from the woods. Another time, a man who camped out on the beach pulled his boat up out of the water to keep it dry and heard a ruckus down by the shore all throughout the night. And in the morning, woke up to find his boat half filled with water. At the time of this next incident, there was only one house left in Julie's Harbor. A group of friends were there one night, staying up late, playing cards, having a good time. All of a sudden, they heard a strange rustle, and when they looked up from their game, they saw an apparition floating through the walls. When they left the house, they never returned to Julie's Harbor. Instead, they towed the house across the harbor to Triton. Alrighty, time to go back to the States, specifically Philadelphia, to visit Fort Mifflin. Built in 1771, Fort Mifflin is the country's only Revolutionary War battlefield that is still intact. Allegedly. There are 14 restored buildings on the grounds on the Delaware River, and reportedly plenty of spirits hanging out. In an interview with CBS3 in Philadelphia, employee Lorraine Donahue Irby said that it's definitely haunted. Doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter what part of the fort you are in, these spirits don't come on demand, but people have had experiences morning, noon, and night. The abandoned fort has sent some overnight ghost hunters running in the middle of the night. Teams have captured orbs of light floating with their camera, they've experienced glimpses of apparitions behind door frames, and recorded disembodied voices. Visitors who explore the fort often see soldiers cleaning their weapons, even when no historical actors are present. Many will catch a whiff or a mysterious aroma like bread baking or wood fire. Some visitors Visitors even claim to have been touched, pushed, and pulled by phantom hands. Among the ghosts said to haunt the fort is a screaming woman whose cries are so loud that Philadelphia police have been called to investigate, only to find nobody there. Other characters in the local ghost stories include a faceless man wandering around the fort, a tour guide dressed in revolutionary garb, and numerous young folks and dogs. The most infamous ghost of Fort Mifflin is the faceless man. So out of that entire list, He's the famous one. Visitors spot his apparition roaming throughout the property in Civil War attire. Many people believe the spirit belongs to William H. Howe, who was notoriously executed at the fort during the Civil War. Now, this guy isn't all super duper mean. According to former tour guides, there was once somebody there, so like an actor who was in Civil War attire with a big hoop skirt, and as she was walking down the stairs to Casemate 11, she had an arm help her with her elbow going down when there was nobody next to her, so they assume it was William. Hey look, I have worn my fair share of hoop skirt sized dresses in my time, and trust me, when I'm alone, I would have loved some ghostly assistance because hoop skirts and stairs are not fun. The name of this next place should definitely make some ears perk up, so if you've fallen asleep by now, wakey wakey! The Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast in Massachusetts. Without a doubt, the most famous haunted bed and breakfast in New England is this one. I believe it's located in Fall River to be exact. The bed and breakfast is at 232nd Street, and it's known for doors opening and closing on their own, combined with a mysterious floral scent that some say are signs of the Borden spirits. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the story, or the macabre jump rope rhyme, police accused Borden of brutally killing her father and stepmother with a hatchet in 1892. Now, she was a acquitted of the killings later that year, but still. Little sus. Now at the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast Museum, visitors can tour the house or spend the night, even staying in the room where stepmother Abby Borden was killed. Guests and employees have reported all kinds of strange activity in the house, including weeping, footstep sounds, an apparition in Victorian era clothing wandering the halls, doors opening and closing, and muffled conversations coming from vacant rooms. Believers in the paranormal claim the house is haunted by everybody. Abby and her husband, the ghosts of two young folks killed by their mother at a house next door, even Lizzie herself on a part-time basis though, because they think Lizzie also haunts Maplecroft, her post-trial house over on French Street. One review on TripAdvisor mentioned that they were told that if you leave money on the dresser, Andrew Borden, so the stepdad, he'll leave you alone at night. Some people claim to have heard noises of creaking or footsteps, unexplained laughter, and seen a ghostly face appearing on a wall in the basement. Dang. Alrighty everybody, we're gonna end today over at the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago, Illinois. To quote one of my all-time favorite films, Lions and Tigers and Ghosts? As it turns out, one of Chicago's most popular attractions is also one of its most haunted, with much more than just chimpanzees roaming the grounds. From the 1840s to 50s, the heart of Lincoln Park served as the city's cemetery, housing some 35,000 bodies. Now, the cemetery was short-lived. Established in 1843, a cholera scare caused residents to fear that the burial of victims would spread the disease to the nearby water supply. Now, the cemetery was eventually moved due to its proximity to said water supply, and most of the bodies, but not all of them, were moved along with it. The long process came to a shocking halt when on the night of October 8th of 1871, high winds blew flaming debris from a south side inferno across the river. The Great Chicago Fire, 
sweeping swiftly northward, pushed North Side residents to flee into the cemetery grounds and eventually into the waters off of North Avenue Beach. The cemetery was almost completely destroyed in the Great Fire. Headboards, the wooden markers which designated most burials of the day, were reduced to ash by the fire, rendering plot after plot impossible to identify. Now with no way to identify where the burials remained, the city simply continued its plans to create a lakefront park, and Chicago moved on. But apparently not all the dead, did. Artisan scholar Pamela Banos, after years of painstaking research, determined that as many as 15,000 bodies may remain in Lincoln Park today. Under the zoo, the ball fields, the grounds of the Chicago History Museum, and even the posh homes off of the Gold Coast. If you've ever seen a horror movie, you know that messing with burial grounds is the easiest way to get haunted. And this zoo is no exception. As if walking above several thousand corpses isn't creepy enough, famed parapsychologist Ursula Bielski once called the area, in its current state, without a doubt the most active site she's ever investigated. And people have reported seeing ghosts there since it opened around 150 years ago. Without a doubt, one of the most legendary of Lincoln Park's ghosts is that of the late John Dillinger, the swashbuckling bank robber who in 1934 wreaked havoc for months across three states before being, well, taken down in the alleyway just south of the Biograph Theater. They say that you can sometimes still see his bluish form stumbling and falling on the pavement, or feel the icy chill of his spirit move through your own body there. But also, because it's a zoo, no animal ghosts have been spotted yet, but so I guess they all made it to heaven? Kicking off our list, we have Claude Monet in fifth place. Yep, the famed artist himself. If you're not familiar with his work, I'd recommend looking up Impression Sunrise, which is the painting that gave the name to the French Impressionism art movement, or his Water Lily series. Most of his work is made up of stunning landscapes, but I think Woman with a Parasol is my personal favorite of his. But you all came here for a ghosty moment, not for me to wax poetic about art, so let's hop into it. In 2015, the Cleveland Museum of Art was installing a new temporary exhibit from the Royal Academy of Arts in London, titled Painting the Modern Garden, Monet to Matisse. The director of architecture was taking photographs to make sure everything looked, you know, according to plan, when she noticed a figure showing up on an empty balcony. The photo in question shows a man with a long white beard, sporting a hat like one Monet was fond of wearing, and looking very much like the artist who was fond of painting his gardens at Giverny. Oh, forgot to mention, Monet was a very passionate horticulturalist, on top of being a fantastic painter. The public communications associate who made a public statement on the photograph, Kelly Nataro has claimed time and time again that the photo is not a hoax, not retouched in any way, and that many more sightings of Monet have been reported since by guests visiting the exhibit. The museum is home to other ghosties as well, with stories told of a little boy running through the gallery dressed in fashions from 1916, and a man in grey staring at the portrait of Jean Gabriel before disappearing into it. Night guards have reported their flashlights flickering on and off in the west wing, and there's a mirror where visitors report seeing a man standing, but when they turn around, no one's there. Fascinating to me that Monet chose a small museum in Cleveland to appear in, and not the musée in Paris that's, you know, dedicated to only his art. Maybe he felt cozy amongst all the other ghosts. Or perhaps he's traveling the world to make sure his art is safe? Let me know in the comments what you think. In fourth place, we have the Grey Lady of Hampton Court Palace. I guess I should probably introduce her formally to begin with, Dame Sybil Penn. She was a servant at Hampton Court to four Tudor monarchs, being the nurse of Prince Edward and also Elizabeth I, nursing her through smallpox before succumbing to it herself in 1562. Sightings of her ghost began being reported in 1829, when the church of the palace was rebuilt and her tomb was moved. I'd probably be ticked as well if I had been resting for that long and then was disturbed. I'm pretty cranky as a person if you wake me up from a deep sleep. Trust me. Once upon a time, I accidentally roared at a friend who was trying to wake me up. Not my finest moment. Anywho, soon after being so rudely disturbed from her grave, strange noises of a person working a spinning wheel were heard through a wall at Hampton Court, which led to the discovery of a previously unknown chamber containing an antique spinning wheel. My inner fairy tale nerd is screaming right now about Charles Perrault. Don't mind me. The photograph we're specifically discussing today was taken in 2015 by Holly Hampshire, age 12, who thought she was taking, you know, a fairly routine picture of her cousin Brooke McGee, also 12, during a day out at the 16th century home while in the King's apartments. You know, just gotta capture those selfies. The girls didn't realize what they had encountered at the time and only made the discovery when looking through their photos a day later. Okay, now before anyone calls bull on this, it's pretty dang realistic. I know I still haven't looked through every photo I took on my most recent vacation, and those photos are almost a week old now. The photograph shows a tall woman with dark flowing hair cloaked in a full length black and gray gown. This is the only time someone has been able to successfully capture her on camera. But she's been spotted many times over the years. Just don't confuse her with any of Henry VIII's wives, since they're also quite 
quite fond of haunting the place on a regular basis, with Jane Seymour and Catherine Howard being the most commonly spotted. Jane can be found on the Silver Stick stairs, which once led to the room where she met her unfortunate end after giving birth to the perfect heir, while wild child Catherine can be heard screaming through the haunted gallery, where it's believed that she broke free of her guards after her initial arrest in a failed attempt to reach her husband to plead for her life. Hey, uh, maybe the Now Museum should play host to a touring cast of six to see what'll happen. I'd be willing to fly out for that. In third place, we have the brown lady. I swear this isn't going to turn into a list of spooky ladies identified by the color of their gowns. I promise. According to legend, the brown lady of Raynham Hall is the ghost of Dorothy Walpole, the sister of Robert Walpole, who is generally regarded as the first prime minister of Great Britain. She was the second wife of Charles Townshend, who was notorious for his violent temper. The story says that when Charles discovered that his wife had committed adultery with Lord Wharton, he punished her by locking her in her rooms in the family home, which is, you guessed it, Raynham Hall. She remained there until her death in 1726 from smallpox. The first recorded claim of a sighting of the ghost was by Lucia C. Stone during a gathering at Christmas of 1835 when she observed the brown lady because of the dated dress she wore. The following evening, another guest claimed to have seen the brown lady again, later reporting that on this occasion he was drawn to the specter's empty eye sockets, which were dark in the glowing face. These sightings led to some staff permanently leaving Raynham Hall, and you know what? Valid. The next reported sighting was made in 1836 by Captain Frederick Marriott, a good friend of Charles Dickens and the author of a series of popular sea novels. It is said that Frederick specifically requested that he spend the night in the most haunted room of Raynham Hall to prove his theory that the haunting was caused by local smugglers to keep people away from the area and not by an actual ghost. The first two nights he slept with a personal safety um, bang bang device under his pillow and encountered nothing. If you didn't get what I'm referring to, just Ask someone in the comments. On the third night, his final evening, two young men knocked at his door very late at night as he was undressing to go to bed and asked him to uh, step over to their room at the other end of the corridor and give them his opinion on a collector's item that had just arrived. As they were leaving the room, he brought his personal safety device, joking that it was in case he met the brown lady. When the inspection of the item was over, the young men declared that they would accompany him back, joking yet again about the brown lady. And this is where I warn y'all, if you tempt fate, fate will deliver. The corridor was long and dark, since the lights had already been extinguished by that point in the night, but as the group reached the middle of the corridor, they saw the glimmer of a lamp coming towards them from the other end, and assumed it was from one of the women in the home visiting a nursery. For context, the bedroom doors in that corridor faced each other, and each room had a double door with a space between, as is the case in many old-fashioned homes. Frederick felt uncomfortable being undressed around women, so out of modesty, slept within one of the outer doors with the guys, in order to conceal himself until the lady should have passed by. As my roomie would say, what a distinguished gentleman. <laughs> he watched her approaching nearer and nearer through the crack of the door until she was close enough for him to distinguish the colors and style of her outfit, and he recognized the figure as the brown lady. He had his finger on the trigger of his device and was about to demand that the ghost stop and give the reason for its presence there, when the figure halted of its own accord before the door, and while holding the lighted lamp she carried to her features, grinned in a malicious and diabolical manner at him. Ooh la la. This act infuriated Frederick, prompting him to leap into the corridor and discharge the device in her face. The figure instantly disappeared in the tiny, um, Kaboom! Passed through the outer door of the room on the opposite side of the corridor and lodged in the panel of the inner one. Frederick never attempted to interfere again, so I'll give him a common sense point for that. The brown lady was caught on camera on September 19th of 1936 when Captain Hubert C. Provand, a London-based photographer working for Country Life magazine, and his assistant, Andre Shira, were taking photographs of Raynham Hall for an article. They claimed that they had already taken a photograph of the hall's main staircase and were setting up to take a second when Andre saw a vapory form slowly taking on the appearance of a woman moving down the stairs towards them. Captain Hubert quickly took the cap off the lens while Andre pressed the trigger to activate the camera's flash. Later, when the negative was developed, the now famous image of the brown lady was revealed. The ghostly experience and photograph of the brown lady was published in Country Life magazine on December 26th of 1936, January 4th, 1937 edition of Life magazine. In second place, we have a photo of John DeFeo. Now y'all know how much I love talking about Ed and Lorraine Warren's cases, so this should come as a shock to no one. If anyone needs a quick briefing on the Amityville Horror House and not the movie, here goes it. On November 13th of 1974, during the very, very, very early morning hours, Ronald DeFeo Jr. ended his entire family and claimed that the demonic voices told him to do it. I'm talking both parents and four siblings. Look, I can't say that I've never joked about ending family members when I'm frustrated, but this is a bit too extreme for my liking. Oh, and um, about a year after that slaughter, a new family moved into the home, but fled after just 28 days, claiming it was haunted beyond 
any way to live in it, describing slime oozing from the walls, windows that would suddenly shatter, instances of levitation, and more. I'd be here for like an hour if I went into full detail. The image I'd like to highlight today was captured by Jean Campbell, a professional photographer who was part of the team who worked with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, who were called in by the Lutz family during the horrors they experienced while, you know, still trying to live in the home. Jean had set up an automatic camera that took infrared pictures to capture the second floor landing during the night. It features what appears to be a young boy with white eyes, believed to be John, who was peeking out of a doorway. George Lutz revealed the Amityville ghost boy photo. George Lutz revealed this photo on the Merv Griffin show back in 1979, three years after it was taken. Hmm. In first place, we have Mary Lee of Waverly Hills Sanatorium. In the early 1900s, the warm, wet weather of Kentucky was the perfect breeding ground for tuberculosis, pushing all of the local hospital's capacities way past their breaking point. The Waverly Hills Sanatorium first opened its doors on July 26 of 1910 as a two-story wooden structure built to house about 50 patients, but in October of 1926, the hospital had expanded to a 400-bed capacity to accommodate a continual influx of patients as a now five-story facility. The sanatorium first opened in the midst of a widespread epidemic, and uh, we all know how epidemics and pandemics go, right? Because of the highly contagious nature of the disease, extreme quarantine measures were required for patients and staff alike, meaning Waverly Hills had to function as an isolated island. The self-sufficient facility produced its own food, raised animals, and ran a functioning post office. Also featured a 500-foot-long tunnel that traveled from the first floor of the building to the bottom of the hill. Supplies could be brought in from the bottom, and the count bodies of deceased patients were discreetly removed from the top. With the eventual introduction of a vaccine, case numbers plummeted, and in 1961 the sanatorium was officially closed, but the pain and suffering of so many souls has left a permanent mark upon the site. And that's where we come in! The photo in question was taken on September 10th of 2006 by Tom Halstead during an overnight investigation of the facility by Missouri Paranormal Research on the fourth floor of the main hospital building at around 7 a.m. If you'd like me to be technical about it, the camera used was a Pentax K1000 35mm film camera with a ProMaster 56000 extendable flash. Black and white 400 ISO film was used, and according to data provided, the camera settings were at about 1 60th of a second speed with an f-stop of 5.6. As one can see, on the right of the frame there appears to be the apparition of a young woman with dark hair and a white nightgown or dress. With the death toll from the institution being well into the thousands, one could worry that she would never be identified. But we do have a lead. She is believed to be a young girl named Mary Lee, based on a photograph that was found of a similar looking girl signed, Love Mary Lee on the back. One source claims that she is the legendary nurse who allegedly went the way of the um, rope necklace in room 502 after learning she was pregnant by a doctor and had tuberculosis. If you visit the sanatorium today for one of their ghost walks, you'll be sure to encounter her amongst the spooky residents that never left. Kicking off at number 5, body of a pig. Demon, ghost, spirit. Ah, this one's for you to decide, but according to paranormal investigator Devin Raymond, who uploaded this video to his own personal channel way back in 2007, whatever it is, has a special message for all of us. Did, did you catch that? Well, first let's talk about the bizarre mystery that surrounds this particular paranormal instance, which was filmed at an undisclosed location during Devin's tenure as resident paranormal expert with an organization that has since disappeared. In this video, Devin allegedly uses EVP technology, or electronic voice phenomena, a process that purportedly can pick up the audio communications of paranormal entities. Let's listen again. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think of that? Next up at number four, the ghost girl. Now, there's not a lot to this video other than to show you because, in actuality, this is a very brief glimpse from a very short video that nevertheless captured something or someone not of this world. Well, either that or there's small children roaming around abandoned houses out in the deep woods, which is equally as concerning. In 2010, YouTuber Car Records uploaded a short two minute clip of two friends exploring an abandoned house out in the woods of northern Ukraine when they came across something lurking in the corner that they didn't quite expect. Ah. 
After initially being startled by something not so apparent, the uploader later slowed the video footage down to capture the face of what appears to be a young girl. Now I get it, a lot of this video is exposition and people have claimed that the girl is just a photograph or a cardboard cutout, but I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure I saw that thing blink. What do you guys think? Coming in at number three, Ghost in the Kitchen. You may have caught our Poltergeist video from earlier this week, but there's one video that stood out as a little bit more unexplainable, shall we say, or explainable depending which way you look at it. Uploaded by YouTuber Je suis un petit pois in 2007, which, if my French is up to scratch, means I am a little P, which captured footage from two days worth of film in Altrincham, Cheshire, at a suspected home under paranormal activity. Let's take a look. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit perplexed by this video. Yeah, I understand that it's an easy encounter to fake, but if we take the exposition into account, and this is the footage of two days worth of filming, then things get a little bit weird in that case. What do you guys think? Next up, at number two, something in the desert. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is possibly one of my favourite paranormal videos on the internet, purely for the fact it's completely and utterly mind-bogglingly weird. It's a simple premise, a group of young friends are driving a truck through a desert in Saudi Arabia, when they stumble across a strange person, creature, entity? Well, of course they whip out their phones and start filming, because that's exactly what people do in the 21st century. This footage was reportedly caught in the empty quarter desert south of Saudi Arabia, otherwise known as Rub Al Khali, the largest contiguous sand desert on the planet. I mean, it's not too hard to believe that there's something weird, strange, and unexplainable lurking far out there in the desert sands, correct? Let's hope we just never stumble across it. And finally, at our number one spot, the Gettysburg Ghosts. Uh -huh. Look. Look. Slated as the most authentic ghost footage of all time, I want you guys to watch through this whole clip and let me know what you think. It's one of those things that you really have to make your own mind up with, because it's either one or two ways, and I prefer not to sway you either one of those ways. But ultimately, this video captured something unexplainable at least. Filmed by Delia and Tom Underwood way back when in November of 2001 at the site of the infamous Battle of Gettysburg of 1863, widely considered to be a turning point during the American Civil War. The couple allegedly have caught footage of the spirits of the soldiers slain during the battle as they march relentlessly through the woods. Watch the whole thing and you'll see what I'm getting at and I'll leave it up to you to decide. Number five, Brazil. Coming up first on our list of ghost footage that's been freaking out the pros and spooking the amateurs alike is this bizarre clip captured and uploaded to the internet by one Mr. Miracle BR. Thank you, Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle shared this and we're glad they did, even if it does have us questioning the nature of our reality ever so slightly. The footage appears to be a body camera footage of a police raid in Brazil, where a group of plain clothed officers are ready to kick down doors to deal with whatever's hiding inside. Of course, they might just be the wrong emergency department to call, as it seems like the Ghostbusters might have been a lot more appropriate. Take a look now. When they kick in that door, either they used a little bit too much force, or there's something in there they're not going to be able to put handcuffs on. The door keeps banging, swinging rapidly and violently back and forth in place. Whatever's going on with this one door seems to be present on all the doors in this warehouse as every door they pass through starts swinging violently as if it's got a mind of their own, leading to the men getting understandably jumpy. You know, the academy doesn't teach you how to deal with ghosts. They start looking over their shoulders over and over, and the video cuts pretty short when the men start to dart down the hall running away in a flurry. Running away from what, I wonder. Now this clip alone is already pretty unsettling. Imagine even with you and your squad, well trained, heavily armed, I still think seeing something you can't explain would have me on edge in a building that already looks pretty creepy. The creepiest part though is apparently this happens to cops more than we know. When the clip was posted, someone on Reddit responded with their own experience in the service. And they wrote, I've cleared some creepy buildings as a cop. The most unrealistic thing about this video is that they kept going. I remember 
remember clearing this abandoned plantation house that still had an alarm hooked up with my partner. As we cleared each room, we left the doors open so we knew where we were cleared. Turned around after the last door and all the doors were shut. Noped on out of there. Makes a lot of sense. I would probably do the same. And if you're looking for way more videos about ghosts, goblins, ghouls, and basically everything freaky above the sun and below it, Top 5 Scary is the place to be. Hit that subscribe button, please tickle that little bell if you wouldn't mind. But do that after this video, because we've got way more ghost sightings coming up for you right now. Coming in at number four, back in the late 1930s, on an especially dark evening, a nun was driving a school bus filled with children home after a field trip. They were heading down Shane Road, but when approaching the railroad crossing, the bus abruptly stalled out on the tracks. Most of the students were sleeping, so the nun was quietly attempting to start the engine back up, when a train emerged, seemingly out of nowhere, as its headlamp was uh, burned out. Something that probably, hopefully, wouldn't happen anymore. It was too late to evacuate the children, as the train was moving way too fast. The nun, desperately and frantically, turned the key, making one last attempt to restart the bus, just as the train smashed through the bus, cutting it in half. The nun was thrown through the windshield, but miraculously survived. The uh, rest of the folks on the bus weren't as fortunate and passed from the event. A few weeks later, the nun, guilt-ridden and heartbroken, returned to the site of the accident, filled with guilt and wanted to end her life. She parked her car on the tracks and sat there, waiting for the next train to come along. Later, when a train came into sight, speeding down towards her, in the same way as that tragic night, the nun began to hear some familiar voices. Then, her car began to move forward, as if it was being pushed from behind, rolling to safety just as the train passed by. In disbelief, the nun got out of her car and began looking around, expecting to find some sort of good Samaritan, but didn't see a single person. She looked back at her car and noticed child-sized handprints on the back of her trunk, and realized that the ghosts of her students had saved her life. The nun was then blessed with a new purpose in life, and she opened a school for orphans, teaching there for the rest of her days. It is said that to this day, if anyone parks their car on or near the railroad tracks at Shane Road, ghostly children will push the vehicle to safety, as they are determined to make sure that no one meets the same gruesome fate that they suffered. Many locals have made claims that say that you can hear the rumbling sounds of a train nearing, the steam whistle howling, and the screeching of wheels as if the train is grinding to a halt. But nothing is there at all, except for the haunting chill of the night. One of the children from this accident is more, shall I say, social than the others, and sometimes tries to find her way home. Not long after these initial incidents, a woman was driving down Shane Road late one night, and as she approached the railroad crossing, she saw a little girl standing all alone on the side of the road, holding a teddy bear. Now this woman immediately stopped, pulled over, and offered the girl a ride home. Once they arrived at the girl's house, the child was hesitant to leave the vehicle and to head inside. The woman assumed that the girl must have run away from home after a fight with her parents, and offered to head to the house first to reassure the family. When the woman got out of the car, she looked back to give the child a reassuring smile, but the girl had completely vanished. She quickly reopened her car door, but no one was there. However, the seatbelt was still fastened. The photo evidence we have from this tale shows the little girl waiting by the tracks, just wanting to get home. Our next weird clip for you is going to be this footage that was uploaded to the Ghosts subreddit. It's got investigators talking and viewers pausing to try and understand just what's going on. And a shout out to the Ghosts subreddit. Thanks for doing most of the heavy lifting on my job. Now you might think that ghosts and spirits only come out to play at night, but when the weather's nice, even the ghosts and ghouls and all things malevolent come out to soak up some rays. Let's give that clip a quick watch. Did you see it? Kinda hard not to. The white specter rushing by the side of the house. The user posted this with the caption, coworker caught this outside of his house and we're speechless. And it's easy to see why. What is it that's been caught on camera sprinting by that house? Now there's definitely something mysterious here. I get the same vibe off this mysterious entity that I do like the Fresno Nightcrawlers to shout out one of my favorite cryptids and unknown paranormal mysteries. I can't explain what's happening and I know there's probably a reasonable scientific explanation but I'm not finding it right now. Now not everyone is as convinced as me. I'm very easily swayed. Some commenters had suggested that perhaps this could be a small animal like a monkey running by really fast or a parrot flying by really, really fast. You'll have to let us know down below in the comments whether or not you think this was proof of a spectral entity caught on security or if this is just a funny little creature monkeying around. For what it's worth, and I think we should take this seriously, I think a monkey could be a ghost. As far as I know, monkeys can become ghosts. I've never seen someone disprove this. I've never seen someone prove this either, but this might be that proof we need. 
In second place, we have Johnny Johnson. While Toys R Us may no longer exist as a physical store in the United States, I think, I'd like to travel back to the 70s when it did. Located in Sunnyvale, California. No, 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 not Sunnydale. No Hellmouth here, I don't think. Toys R Us decided to build a store over the property of a former ranch. Honestly, pretty normal sounding so far, right? Staff and customers alike began to report multiple incidents of what they believed to be a haunting, ranging from hearing their names whispered to them or feeling cold breezes and seeing objects moving around on their own. The woman's bathroom, in particular, seemed especially spooky because the sink's faucet taps would turn on by themselves. Oh, and um, some female employees said they experienced what felt like some invisible being playing with their hair, which... Mm. In 1978, psychic Sylvia Brown held a seance there for the first time, determined to identify the entity. The ghost haunting the store allegedly revealed himself as Johnson. Johnson's ghost told Brown that he was a preacher and a ranch hand in the 1880s on what was then the Murphy family farm. He spoke with a mild Swedish accent, and his first name was either John, Jan, or Johan. 10 out of the 16 people assembled there for the seance said they heard a high buzzing noise when Sylvia was supposedly listening to the ghost. The ghost told her that he had been in love with Murphy's daughter Elizabeth, who ran off with an East Coast lawyer. Old news clippings say that Johnson accidentally hacked his leg with an axe while carelessly chopping down trees and um, met his end from the injuries. Sylvia repeatedly went back to the Toys R Us to communicate with Johnny, who she called the most stubborn, ornery, argumentative ghost she'd ever met in her book, stating that she had tried many times to explain to him that his lifetime as Johnny Johnson had ended. Apparently Johnny got so frustrated about being told that he had passed that he gave her the ultimatum that if she ever brought it up again, he would go silent. Sylvia let the matter drop since she and the ghost supposedly had a quasi-friendship where they would chat about the annoying and noisy kids who frequented the store. A 2007 piece on Snopes, which if you're unaware of, is a pretty legitimate fact-checking site, featured a woman named O'Brien who had worked at the store for over 18 years stocking shelves, claiming that she didn't believe in ghosts, but when you feel a breeze behind Behind you or someone calls your name and there's nobody there. Funny things happen that she just couldn't rationally explain. The report talked about dolls and toy trucks leaping off the shelves, balls bouncing down the aisles, and children's books falling off the racks. Baby swings would move on their own. The folks at Toys R Us say they've tried to explain it logically, but they've got nothing. Johnny was captured on camera in 1978, casually leaning against the shelves while the group that was there for the seance is shown sitting. Now that the store is no longer a Toys R Us, it has housed a spirit Halloween, which feels fitting for some weird reason. Number one, the Arizona truck ghost. You ask any man of the road, ask them if they've ever seen anything strange up there and they'll tell you everything. And this next clip is just more fuel for that fire. William Church is a truck driver who was driving down Arizona State Route 87 on March 11th and he saw something he couldn't explain. And this time it wasn't just the heebie-jeebies from one too many coffees and a Slim Jim for breakfast. He spotted something spectral on the road that was recorded by his dash cam and he thinks this translucent figure was something not of this world. You can see the lines through the legs making a figure, Church told Fox News. Now there are some locals who believe that the highway itself is haunted. It was first built in 1927 and stretching across approximately 273 miles, there's a good bit of tragic history on Route 87. It's been described as one of Arizona's most treacherous roads and as such countless fatal car accidents have occurred on this particular stretch of land. Could it be that because of this there's spirits still trapped on the long lonely road wandering around around looking for a home they'll never be able to return to. After Church's video was uploaded and went a bit viral, viewers reported that they'd seen a lot of supernatural activity around Arizona's highways. If I'm ever traveling through Arizona, I think I will take a boat, perhaps. One of Arizona's many, many plentiful boats for its vast and teeming rivers and lakes. That's what everybody knows about Arizona. It's a really wet state, right? Really wet state. Kicking off at number five, Wentworth Woodhouse. Back in December of 2017, a group of investigators known as Soul Reaper Paranormal headed out to Rotherham, South Yorkshire to Wentworth Woodhouse, a 17th century private estate that is notorious as a paranormal hotspot. The paranormal investigation team did an entire sweep of the 23,000 square yard building, but within just two minutes of being there, they caught this perplexing footage. Allegedly, the team described the apparition as being the same height as a child and after standing in direct view of the cameraman, appeared to float through the wall as if trying to lead the team in a certain direction. The team described the spirit as being awash with residual energy, which is interesting because the majority of these apparitions can be explained away as a lens flare or a flicker of light, but in this case, the shape still holds its form even though when the footage is inverted. Interesting, right? Well, 
What do you guys think? Next up at number four, sounds from the basement. Admittedly, this is an audio video, so I'll give you fair credit for feeling a little cheated. However, the content of this minute-long YouTube video is so strangely disturbing that he just had to make this list. Published over a decade ago in 2007, YouTuber Don Garvey responded to a homeowner that had regularly heard strange, unsettling noises coming from their basement, and so, along with the paranormal investigation team, set up some rudimentary audio recording equipment in the basement to see what was going on. After three days of capturing no compelling explanation, on the fourth night, just after 3 a.m., they realized that there was something down there making an otherwise otherworldly racket. Now, Don has defended this footage for over a decade, regularly explaining that the footage was completely unedited other than being amplified and maintaining that he still has no explanation for the ghostly sound. Either he's got one hell of a poker face or he really did capture the wailing of a disturbed spirit. Coming in at number three, Dream Water Lounge. And we're going back to England again because we all know that's where the spookiest stuff happens, right? In 2015, some pretty unnerving CCTV footage was captured at the Dream Water Lounge wine bar in Stockton. Heath Cheshire. Following decades of reports from staff of strange happenings on the property who regularly complained of an unsettling feeling throughout. Well, at 1 minute 15, the CCTV camera captures what appears to be an incredibly clear silhouette of a figure moving throughout the corridor before disappearing and the camera shaking back to normality. Well, horror fans, I've got to be honest with you, the reason that I chose this clip for our number three spot, right in the middle, is because, well, it's a fake. A very good fake, but still an obviously doctored piece with some very clear tampered editing to propagate a paranormal story. Remember, it's important to be vigilant when facing the unexplainable. At 37 seconds when the lights cut, it appears to rain on the camera. However, the streak marks seem to take away the hard-coded date and timestamp, which just doesn't happen. It's not on the camera lens in any way, unless the spirit possesses the power to cause digital precipitation, which... Who knows? Well, we will leave the link to this video in the info box so you can check it out for yourself and let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. Next up, at number two, Gettysburg Ghosts. Right there. See? Uh huh. Look. Which, compared to our previous point, is definitely a video that myself, as well as the majority of the internet, find incredibly difficult to explain away because it's just so weird and the perfect example of a difficult to explain ghost video. This is heralded by many as the most genuine paranormal footage ever captured and has held that title ever since it was filmed way back when in November of 2001. Husband and wife duo Delia and Tim Underwood were visiting the triangular field at Gettysburg on a day trip with their grandchildren when after filming the site they noticed something appear along the tree line. Shapes, figures, almost too clear to be true figures of what appeared to be American Civil War soldiers moving in formation. Now, I'm going to level with you guys. I've tried to look as critically as possible at this footage and I'm still stumped. The video quality is low at best, which would make any post editing pretty obvious. There's none of that. Other than several very unlikely lens flares, I don't have an explanation. Check it out for yourselves and let us know your thoughts in the comment box down below. And finally, at our number one spot, thing in the hallway. Now, it's important to remember that this piece of footage was made for entertainment, but still, I think the possibility of it being tampered with is incredibly low, and nevertheless, it doesn't make it any less terrifyingly weird. Ghost Stalkers, a short-lived paranormal documentary series from veteran investigator John E. L. Tenney, featured an episode where himself and his assistant spent the night alone in violently haunted locations. It's important to note that this episode was the only television show to ever capture a full-body app apparition on camera and that's kind of a big deal. The figure that has now become known as the Tall Man was filmed inside the old Taylor Memorial Hospital in Hawkinsville, Georgia, a notorious hotspot for the paranormal and well, I'm pretty sure the show's creators couldn't believe their eyes after capturing one of the most chilling pieces of paranormal evidence ever. Again, we'll leave the link in the info box down below so you can check it out in full. Yeah. That's some pretty spooky stuff. Number five, the ghost. Coming up first today in our list of real, scary, demonic footage from the beautiful country of India is this particularly threatening video that's been making the rounds online, which, if you believe some commenters, may have proof of ghostly life on it. Or unlife? Is that, is that more correct? Anyway, let's roll the clip and let's take ourselves a look.
This white clad ghost was caught walking on the rooftops of Varanasi in the VDA colony located in the Badi Gabi area. Now in this video you can see a shadow walking on the rooftop of a house and that pale ethereal ghostly figure seemingly blowing in the breeze. Now when the video was shared it went viral quickly on Twitter causing a small panic amongst local residents who demanded that there was a formal investigation made by police. Do you guys not know? Have you guys not heard? Has this not reached you? That is not the team you're supposed to call when there's something strange in the neighborhood. You call the Ghostbusters. They have a whole song about it. Now of course. Not everyone bought immediately that this mysterious figure was a ghost. More than a few commenters on the original video suggested that it was just someone hanging their laundry out to dry and the video was little more than all of us letting our imaginations run wild. I gotta be honest though, if it was late at night and I was on the rooftops of India, I think I would definitely be freaked out seeing this because it does look like a ghost even if it does look an awful lot like a bed sheet or someone in a Charlie Brown ghost costume. Sure it could be a human tendency to form anthropomorphic patterns and objects we don't quite recognize but it's also entirely possible that it is a ghost. I tried to do some follow up on this. I was trying to figure out if the local police ever did end up investigating this but I really don't think they would have been much help. You can't really arrest a ghost. Their hands would slip right on through the handcuffs and you would look just ridiculous. Ridiculous. How are you going to keep a ghost in jail? It's going to walk right through a wall. You can't arrest a ghost is what I'm trying to get across. And if you're looking for more footage of ghosts that cannot be arrested, Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some. Oh, you better believe. If you can think it up, there's a good chance we've done two or three videos on it. Ghouls, goblins, aliens, conspiracies, megalodons, everything and more. So hit subscribe. Please make sure you ring that little bell as well so you don't miss a single one of our videos. But do that at the end of this video, okay? Because I got four more freaky things coming out of India to show you right about now. Number four, the pale figure. Now coming up next is a clip, also out of India, believe it or not, you know they're all gonna be out of India, that went viral last year and captured the attention of paranormal enthusiasts, alien hunters, and skeptics alike. It's nice when you get everyone together like that. We're all get equally confused by what we're watching. A strange humanoid like figure was spotted walking across the road in India confusing just about everybody. Whatever it was, it was filmed walking alone steadily on a bridge at night in Jharkhand in eastern India, staggering through the night. Now the thing resembles a human, that much is sure, and that's what my brain tells me it should be, but the more you look at it, the more you start to wonder if maybe, just maybe, it might be something else. The creature is real gangly and has these long arms and pale white skin and a very skinny torso and sounds a bit like your host actually if I'm being honest. It looks a great deal more like a Silent Hill monster than it does a person. Motorcyclists were swerving out of the way of the figure which stops and stares at them a bit before continuing to stroll onwards. Now naturally footage this weird has people talking and wondering as to just what the heck this thing could possibly be. More than a few people suggested it could be an alien walking around the streets at night explaining why it seems so confused about where it is. Others suggested a ghost which would definitely be pretty spooky. It seems like it's in the physical plane though so I don't know if it's a ghost. Finally there's the realists. Uh, who have suggested that this could just be someone who had a long, long night and is lost trying to find their way home, possibly on one, two, all of the substances, trying to get a good night's sleep. Now, I did some digging. As far as I know, nobody cracked this case, so we may never have a satisfying answer. So that is your cue to speculate and sound off in my little comment box. Number three, a UFO over India. Coming up next is this clip shared online with the caption, a weird set of lights above New Delhi. Let's take a little look see. So in this clip, pretty clearly we can see some strange happenings going on in the night sky. There's a scattering of lights above the city's horizon. Now immediately your first thought is probably to suggest that it might be drones, which is very reasonable. I feel like drones turn out to be a lot of UFO sightings, but the original poster states that drones really are not common for civilians in India at all and are even outright illegal in some parts of the country. And on top of that, the area that he's filming is said to be in the slums where it is extra less likely that anybody's got any drones to spare. The video when it was originally posted to Reddit, the poster added this for context. He said, I saw this today around 8pm in New Delhi with a friend. It was massive. 
This cannot be a building as there is no tall building in that direction, only slums with a maximum height of four to five floors, but these lights looked as tall as the Burj Khalifa. There was a moderate wind going on and I thought if it's drones, why aren't they swaying? Not to forget drones are illegal in India and especially in New Delhi. It looked massive in the sky. I wish the camera saw what my eyes could see because it absolutely blew me away. I've been to drone shows, but this looked nothing like it. Any idea what this could be? Now some people in the comment section on the clip originally posted suggested that maybe this was a laser light show, but that was just speculation and nothing concrete. A particularly good selection that I enjoyed was that the original original poster should have ran towards the lights to see what happens, you know, live a little. Worst case, yeah, you get abducted, but you would get the ride of a lifetime and an amazing story to tell people. Just live a little, you know? And if a UFO is not quite demonic enough for you, terribly sorry about that. Hopefully this next one will change your mind though. Number two, the mutant goat. Coming in at the next spot, something a teeny tiny little bit different from others. I figured we'd take a small break from pale figures on CCTV and strange lights in the sky and we'd show something we can all enjoy, you know, something that's fun for the whole family, really bringing everybody together, mutant goats. On August 16th, a Facebook user named Samira Isa posted these footage of a strange, strange goat that she had discovered. Now, I don't know about you, I already find a goat kind of strange. I think they're definitely one of the most demonic animals by nature. If you've ever heard a goat scream, you definitely know they've got some evil inside them, but this one is on another level. As you can see right away, this goat came out with a face looking a lot more like a human's than a goat. The creature's got a long jawline, a huge nose, and almost like elf ears. It is not hard at all to see why this thing was freaking people out. I think if I saw this writhing and moving in person, I would be running out of the room, grab myself a Bible, a rosary, and some holy water, see about exercising this demon mutant ghost. Goat. Mutant ghost goat. As soon as the mutant goat was born, it started capturing people's attention, unsurprisingly. Some were afraid the creature was demonic in some way. Others worried the creature was a byproduct of some twisted scientific experimentation. Not 100% sure what the purpose of, of making a goat with a human face would be. I don't know the practical application of that, but I don't question the facts, I just blindly repeat them. Now others wondered if this creature hybrid came about naturally, if this was a merging of a deer and a zebra, or a cow and a goat, or a dog and a goat. I don't really know about all that, I'm not a science man, I'm not a scholar, but I don't know if that works the way it does. It might just be a horrific birth mutation that caused this goat to come out serving evil, or could it be something significantly more sinister? Something supernatural we couldn't hope to explain hiding away in those hooves? I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to know. I'm fine with the human face goat and me living on different continents. And number one, the mountain lion ghost. And in our final spot for today is going to be this ghost footage coming out of Dehradun, India that's got the internet on fire and paranormal investigators gluing their eyes to the screen to try and figure out just what was caught on camera. This clip was originally posted to Reddit on the ghost subreddit, not to spoil too much, which allegedly is in this video, but allegedly it's a ghost. The original uploader claims that people often hear these spine chilling cries and screams coming from the railway tracks at night when there's no one around, with locals claiming that the screams come from the restless spirit of the woman who died in a train accident in that place, crying out in agony for those doomed to hear. Let's roll that clip so we can put you on edge tonight. I want you sweating. You hear that? Hard not to. Sounds like a screech that goes right through your ears and sticks into your heart, causing your hairs to stand up so straight you could use them as a level. Now not everyone is as convinced as your easily convinced host that this is proof of a ghost. There were more than a few commenters who suggested that this screech wasn't from a ghost, but rather from a mountain lion, which is kind of like a ghost if a ghost was an alive really big cat. Now I'm a young Canadian man, I've got lots of experience with cougars and mountain lions too, and it definitely does sound like a big cat's growl into the night. They definitely sound terrifying. I think this is a rare case in which the sound that's making the creepy noises that isn't a ghost 
is worse than if it was a ghost. I would rather be haunted than go toe to toe with a mountain lion personally. I know there's at least a chance I could survive fighting a ghost, like a little bit. Number five, a gnome. Is a gnome a demon? I don't know, I find most gnomes benevolent, actually, but they could be. Our next clip looks like something out of the start of a low budget horror movie, bit of an A24 vibe. I started watching this clip and then as soon as it got going, I literally pressed my nose to my computer screen, so I hope you do the same. The clip was posted to the subreddit r slash humanoid encounters. I definitely recommend it if you're into this sort of thing. There's a lot of really good humanoid encounters on there. And the poster explained that this has happened to their relatives, but they don't know what's going on. What we can see in the clip is bizarre. Someone is outside on their front porch, shining a light into the darkness, trying to find what is stalking them on their property. It can be a little hard to see, but behind the big rock, we see what looks like teeny tiny little hands peering out trying not to be seen playing a little game and know me hide and seek now it can be hard to make out what exactly is going on in this clip but it almost seems to like there might be more than one of those little creepy crawlers wiggling around back there now the original poster suggested that these creatures are indigenous folklore of little people which I think this is pretty interesting is a myth that is almost ubiquitous across the globe pretty much every people's you know Ireland Greece the Philippines New Zealand Indonesia and and so many more all all have stories of gnomes or elves or little mischievous people creeping about in the night. I just find it interesting that the whole planet all has that myth. Are they all wrong or are gnomes real? Now let's put on our scully hat for a second, get a little uh, dowdy. This could extremely easily be somebody playing along for a prank or someone just hiding behind a rock, playing with a doll, poking it out. The only evidence we have that this is a gnome is OP's word that they swear this is a close family member and they wouldn't do this sort of thing. And you can go through the YouTube channel, you see it's mostly just family videos, so that does make sense. So I toss it over to you, my beloved YouTube commenter gang. You guys keep me young, I love those comments. Little people creeping around, or is this just a tall tale? Oof, I spent all night working on that pun. And if you're looking for more videos of ghosts and goblins and gnomes with this guy talking over them, I've got lots of that for you on our channel. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Make sure you ring that bell so you doubly don't miss any of it. But if you really cared about me, no, I'm not saying you do. You do it at the end of this video so you can watch all the other demons caught on camera first because I got four more coming. Number four, Dogman. Coming up next is this clip that was making the rounds around the spookier sides of the internet of an Instagram user going live. The user was complaining that he'd seen something strange earlier in the day referring to a dog man that he thought he had seen. Now that is different from a werewolf. A dog man is a fairly popular cryptid that gets mentioned every now and again, kind of like a goat man or a moth man deal. It's like a bipedal wolf, but it's not a werewolf, okay? If you think it's a werewolf, that's a different thing. Anyway, this guy was talking on live and heard something strange outside and went to go check. Let's go with him and let's go watch the clip. I think you roll it again if you didn't see it, but at around a minute into the clip, when the user going live hears something strange and goes in to check on what it was, we see something rush by, if only for a second, that does not look like it's from this world at all. Looks like a tall creature running by on its hind legs. And I know it does give off a werewolfy vibe. I get it. It looks like a werewolf. I get it. But it's a dog man. It's totally different. I, I don't have the time to explain the difference, but a dog man and a werewolf are totally different. Now, here's the thing. Either this video is one of the best fakes I've ever seen, and I watch a ton of supernatural videos, so I like to think I got an eye for it. It's got a great budget, an actor who really knows how to sell a scare, or this is something that actually happened to a real terrified guy. It being on Instagram Live gives it a little bit more credibility, you know? It's harder to fake things in camera on live. It doesn't really seem like someone in a costume, it just looks like it was a dog man caught on camera. Okay, so realist, scully mode, I don't know. I don't know if I have one. Molder mode, that's a dog man. That's a dog man all the way down. Why don't you all let me know down below what we think is going on down there. And also if you have some insight on the werewolf dog man debate, lend a hand. I'm fighting a losing battle here. Number three, strange things in Montana. Montana is sometimes called the treasure state. All the gold and silver that have been uncovered there. And also for lesser reasons, for all the wild cryptid stories that come out of it. For seekers of the supernatural, Montana is a treasure trove, a real treasure state. Now Deer Lodge is a city in Montana and it's purported to be 
a hotbed of supernatural occurrences. Rumored to be home to creatures that defy classification and scientific convention and avoid the trail cams. Until recently, a local rancher from Deer Lodge caught something bizarre on his land when something tripped the motion sensor on his trail camera. Now, the black and white footage shows a blindingly bright, glowing humanoid with what looks like an oversized and oblong head walking bizarrely in front of the camera. My first thought is that Simpsons episode has Mulder and Scully guest starring. The Simpsons episode with Mulder and Scully, where Mr. Burns is glowing green through the woods. That's what I'm thinking of when I see this. Now, this trail cam was miles away from any roads or trails so there shouldn't be anybody creeping around, but there is. The rancher returned to the site of the photo and stood in the same spot and tried to mimic the composition of what he saw. When he posed himself against and compared the other image, he came out looking pretty human compared to the sort of odd alien proportions of the glowing being, which also happened to be devoid of any features. So what was it? Now, some believe it to be extraterrestrial life popular. The show Ancient Aliens, the most reputable name in alien news, took the trail camera footage to analyze for authentication. No alterations, manipulations, inconsistencies were discovered of any kind. Well, I don't know what's going on in there. Others wondered if perhaps the creature could be a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch or maybe even some other manner of currently undiscovered or unknown cryptid we don't even know about. This could be a first contact scenario. So what do you think was caught on this trail cam? An alien? A Sasquatch? Something dreadfully normal? We may never know, but it's fun to theorize. Number two. The Sadako Trampoline. Have you ever seen The Ring? Or perhaps the original, Ringu? Probably not, because if you saw The Ring, you would have died roughly seven days after that, and then you wouldn't be able to watch all of these lovely videos on Top 5 Scary, and I'd miss you too much. The Japanese original is one of my favorite horror movies ever, which you probably notice if you watch this channel a lot, because I crowbar references in to Sadako roughly three times a week in these videos. Not my fault, she's the definitive ghost girl, lover in Dead by Daylight, big fan of her. I I can't think of many things I've seen in my life half as creepy as that image of Sadako stretching herself out of the TV into the real world, the greasy, long, stringy black hair over her pallid face. Oh, well, exactly for what happens in this next clip, which is just as terrifying. Take a look. At first, it seems like someone filming some summer fun until you get a better look at what appears to be a figure clad all in white crawling out from under the trampoline looking a lot like Sadako crawling out of that TV. Definitely has me scratching my head watching over again. Now, not everyone is as convinced as your easily convinced Crypt Keeper. One commenter on the video attempted to debunk it as a fake, lending a little bit of insight as a video editor. They said, I'll guess that the ghost figure is a clip of someone standing up, which has been motion tracked and composited in with blurring and opacity. If the shot was stabilized, like I'm guessing it was, this would be fairly straightforward and easy. The camera shake could be added in digitally after the motion tracking is done to really sell the shot. I noticed the blur on what looks like the ghost's back as it stands up, and the jumper's leg passes over the figure, and this blur is whipped away. The clip stops as the figure is moving above the black netting, which is being used to conceal any editing artifacts. Well, okay, so it sounds like they know a lot about video editing, infinitely more than I do, and that's all well and reasonable, but could also be a ghost. Who's faking ghost videos? That's too much time in the day to be faking ghost videos. Number one, the Jersey Devil. The infamous Jersey Devil is said to haunt the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. There are a ton of spins and variations on its origins, and if you're really curious, search Jersey Devil on our channel, nobody else's, okay? Don't need anybody else taking all those views. There's tons and tons of stories about it, but one of the most famous variations is that at a place called Leeds Point, during a thunderstorm in 1735, a Quaker woman gave birth. As the room flickered with light, the wind howled, and the poor mother who'd already raised 12 infants gave birth to the 13th. Now, some say the 13th was cursed by the devil. Some say she cursed it herself. But the story goes that this 13th child would not emerge normal, but with winged shoulders, a horse's head, cloven feet, and a wretched tail. It would soar out into the night, casting itself in the annals of folklore as the Jersey Devil. Now, over the years, there have been tons of sightings of the alleged Jersey Devil. At one point during the early 20th century, sightings would get posted in the hundreds in local newspapers. Now, our local newspapers don't reference cryptids as much as they used to. I'd like us to get back to that. But what we do have is TikTok capturing it, the modern day newspaper. 
take a look at this wild footage that has been going viral across TikTok and Instagram. We see the horrific creature perched, and yeah, I'm not in the business of patronizing you. This is a CGI creature. It's impressively rendered, and they did a good job editing into the scene, but that background is in Jersey, for starters. The problem is they made this look too good. The creature is too well modeled and animated in a broad daylight setting. You know, a really good cryptid fake would have had the camera a lot grainier and blurrier and I purposely, I, I personally would have said it somewhere a little more rural, a little more farmlandy, foresty, but it's entertaining nonetheless, right? I think we're too quick to cry fake. When we don't seem to realize these creatures are only as real as if we believe in them. So start believing in them harder and eventually Mothman will be real. Number five, spook light. In the early 1830s, when the Native Americans were put on their forced march during the Trail of Tears, some of them reported seeing something unusual while near Missouri and Oklahoma's border. Something that has remained a consistent part of American folklore and a relatively commonly reported sight ever since. While the Native Americans were passing through an area known as the Devil's Promenade, they apparently saw a glowing orb of light that was floating in the distance. Sometimes it's reported as being the size of a baseball, and other times as being the size of a basketball. Sometimes it remains stationary as it hovers in the night, and sometimes it appears to vibrate and twitch in the air. Explanations have included tales of two Native American lovers searching for each other in the night, the ghost of a Confederate soldier, and even the devil himself wandering the earth with a lantern. It has gone by many names, such as the Joplin Spooklight, the Hornet Spooklight, the Hollis Light, and the Devil's Jack-o'-Lantern. The sight of the Spooklight has become somewhat of a tourist attraction, with the area being especially popular around Halloween. But though scientists have speculated that it could be the result of a natural gas leak or car lights reflecting off a nearby river, this does not explain the dozens of sightings that occurred before the invention of the automobile. What if the cause of this floating orb is not the spirit of some lost soul trying to find their way home, but the manifestation of extraterrestrial activity? We've all heard plenty of stories of glowing orbs in the sky that have gotten closer and turned out to be starships from outer space. The spook light could perhaps actually be one of these unidentified flying objects. If you subscribe to the theory that aliens have not made direct contact with us because they are studying our species, it would make sense that this light would first appear during a major historical event where millions of displaced native peoples were forced into long marches. Perhaps the sightings since then have been follow-up studies of the area by aliens. If that is the case, and aliens were observing Earth during the Trail of Tears, let's hope they don't judge us for some of our most shameful behavior. Number 4. Funnel Ghosts Tell me if this tale sounds familiar. A couple moves into an old house. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but they believe they can put in the work and make it a home. They live there for a while, but when night falls, they take a photo and see something they don't expect. Not the typical idea of a ghost where the spirit looks like a past human, perhaps with a transparent appearance, but what is known as a funnel ghost. These spirits are often described as being swirling wisps or spirals of light that often appear in photos or videos, with little to no explanation. Often, when these funnel ghosts are seen, they are believed to be past loved ones or former residents of the home come back to say hello. But maybe these wisps are really visitors from another planet. If aliens are real, they clearly do their best to remain as hidden as possible from humanity. This would explain why UFO sightings are rarely reported in crowded, well-lit areas, and why they don't tend to be active on social media. Despite alien abduction stories where people are taken away to be studied and probed by our alien visitors, if you really wanted to study humans, it would be much more informative to study them in their natural environments. Obviously, little green men running around your home and watching you while you and your family eat would be suspicious. So maybe they've developed a way to hide in plain sight. An advanced species capable of interstellar travel and with spacecraft that are rarely seen by human eyes and hardly ever captured with any clarity on film, 
could be using some kind of technology that reflects ambient light in order to keep them invisible. If we assume this technology is used to hide their ships, it is not unreasonable to hypothesize that this technology could be available for aliens on the ground. The strange shapes appearing in photos that we assume are ghosts are actually aliens studying us in our own homes, using a cloaking device to remain undetected and only being seen when a camera picks up their telltale shimmer. Number three, sightings at the West Point Lighthouse in PEI. When it comes to lists of spooky and probably haunted locations, lighthouses are surely near the top of the list, just under murder houses, ancient manors, and abandoned mental hospitals. Such is the case for our next entry, a lighthouse on the west point of the Canadian province of Prince Edward Island. The lighthouse was built in 1876, being passed from keeper to keeper until the operation was automated in 1963. The lighthouse was renovated into an inn, museum, craft shop, and chowder kitchen in the mid-1980s, and has been the source of tales of the supernatural ever since. Visitors often report rather stereotypical ghost activity, such as lights turning on and off, disembodied voices, and cold spots sending a shiver up guests' spines. More interesting for the purposes of this list are the tales of a ghostly burning ship being seen in the nearby Northumberland Strait. Legend says that at night, sometimes if you look out to sea, you can see a centuries-old ship whose crew were killed when their ship caught fire and sank. According to the tale, they made a deal with the devil in order to save themselves, and as a result, are damned to burn on the ship for all of eternity. From the distance that the people who reported this burning ship would be from the boat, they wouldn't be able to make out with much detail on the apparition especially at night, when the ship appears in the vast majority of reported sightings. So, all they would really be seeing is a large, bright, flickering light coming towards the lighthouse that, through the context of the situation, they would assume was a ship. But it makes me think, there are so many stories of UFOs appearing as bright, shining, flickering lights that disappear just as soon as they appear. What if this burning ghost ship is actually an alien craft signaling with its lights? You may think, why would an alien ship be signaling anyone? But look at the situation from their perspective. You're flying around in your flying saucer above the waters of Canada. You see another bright floating light in the distance. You signal to let it know you are there, and when you get close enough to realize that it is not another alien craft, but a tower with a bright light on it that the humans have built on the cliffside. You realize and turn out your lights, causing your ship to seem to suddenly disappear to any humans who saw you. It might very well be a ghost ship, but the fact that it is so close to what would look like a floating light to the uninitiated makes me think this is just as likely. Number two, things moving on their own. Another common type of ghost is the alleged poltergeist. They are the type of spirit who enjoys their afterlife by messing around in your home with the intention of scaring you and causing as much property damage as possible. A common way these spirits apparently make their presence known is by moving objects and making them float through the air. Like when you hear a noise at night and go into the kitchen to investigate, only to find your mother's best china floating through the air before it suddenly drops to the floor, leaving you with one less token of remembrance to honor your loved ones with. But maybe this is not the work of a malevolent spirit but simply a side effect of passing alien ships. When looking at various UFO sightings from across the world, some commonalities begin to emerge. The craft in question are often bright, shining lights against the dark night sky. They tend to appear and disappear just as quickly, and they often seem to be hovering or flying seemingly on their own, with no visible means of propulsion, or at least none that we can see. Perhaps these alien craft are not flying with the use of rockets, but by manipulating gravity. If these ships are able to do this, they could use this to take away gravity 
under their ship, allowing it to hover or fly through the night. Something like this could affect the houses below it, in a similar way that houses located near airports can have their contents rattled by passing planes. Perhaps when alien craft are negating gravity and flying overhead, they are unintentionally affecting gravity in the homes below them, causing things to float and move, not because of spirits, but because of gravity being manipulated. And once the ship has passed, the objects drop, making it seem like an evil spirit has destroyed these lighter objects out of spite for the homeowner. This would mean that people who are dealing with consistent ghost activity were actually just unlucky enough to be directly below an alien's commute. Number 1. Ghostly Figures of the Past Everyone has heard some variation of a ghost story like this. You go into an old building that is hundreds of years old. At first, everything seems normal when suddenly goosebumps break out across your flesh as a chill runs up your spine. You turn and see something you don't expect. A figure from the distant past stands before you. Perhaps it is a soldier from the 1930s, and perhaps it is a small Victorian child in one of those weird little sailor outfits. You try to stammer out some words of greeting, but before you can, they have disappeared before your very eyes. Stories like this are very common in ghost sightings, and can take place anywhere from an old Victorian mansion, a field where an important battle was fought, or even in your own home. You may think that something like this would scream ghost and nothing else, but what if these haunting apparitions are just a side effect of extraterrestrial travel? When considering the possibility of alien visitors, we must ask the question of how they got to our planet in the first place. Even if their craft were capable of reaching light speed, they would take hundreds of years to reach our planet, which hardly seems worth it if assuming these beings have a comparable lifespan to humans. Perhaps they could cryogenically freeze themselves to make the journey more manageable, but that would still make getting to and from the planet a real hassle. Or perhaps these alien beings are capable of faster than light travel, which our concept of science says is impossible. Maybe the answer isn't that these aliens are moving fast. Maybe the answer is that they are bending space and time to reach their destination. If these beings were capable of traveling across the fourth dimension and bending space and time around or folding it in on itself, then it is reasonable to hypothesize that there would be some unintended side effects. One theory of how time works is that all of it is happening at once. So if a place, say a spooky mansion, were occupied by a small Victorian child in one point of time, and say, Ryan Reynolds in another. Maybe time folding in on itself to accommodate alien travel would cause us to be able to catch glimpses into the other points in time. So, this hypothetical Ryan Reynolds would see the child from the past and assume it was a ghost. And who knows, maybe the child would see Ryan and assume he is a handsome spirit from the future. 